Hello everyone. So this is the journal that has kind of come together, the one that I will be giving away. And so I'm to the part now where I want to do the cover of the book and then uh, stitch it together and do the binding. And I'm going to show how I do the binding in the next video. It, just because this one, with everything that I was doing for the cover, it ended up going a little longer than I planned. So I decided to break it up into two separate videos. And I think for the spine of the book, when I get to the next video, I'm going to incorporate some sort of fabrics, lace trims, so forth. I, I was thinking of doing, of trying something new with the binding using trims. So we'll see how that goes, but that'll be coming up in the next part, in the next video that I do. Okay, so my idea for the cover was to use as my centerpiece, one of these embellishments that I'm going to create or pendants that I'm going to create using the Finnebear Art Nouveau molds and some of the Quick Cure Clay. And I've never used either one of these before, so I'm really excited to see how this goes. But I've had these in stock for, I don't know, four or five months now. I purchased them when they were just released and now, of course, you know, I'm behind schedule, but I do have these for sale at my site. So if you're interested, you can check those out there. I think that these would be so much fun to use on a, you know, a wide array of, of projects, whether it be uh, for tags, creating some beautiful mixed media tags or mixed media canvas works of art or just the covers of a journal or like these molds that I'm showing here I think those would look really cool on the spine of a book so yeah I'll be playing with these quite a bit and I will probably do another video we'll see what happens what comes along uh, things always change as you know in my world <laughs> I, uh, I, I have all these plans but yeah, there's always things, new things that, that come into play, so we'll, we'll see. So yeah, I'm going to start by showing how I create the centerpiece of the cover of my book. And again, I will be using the Ranger Quick Cure Clay. Uh, again, I've never used this before, so this will be a first time using it. But in researching it, I did find that the Quick Cure Clay is a lot stronger than the paper clay after you know it's all cured and everything and the time you, it just takes a few minutes to cure the clay with a heat gun so yeah we'll see how that goes and then I'm also going to be using some of these dies that I received from In Love Arts she reached out to me and asked if I would be willing to promote some of her dies and so some of them I paid for and then some of them she sent to me to uh, promote. So these are some that I received. These I thought I, I, I can see myself using these a lot. Uh, just nice little tags that you can create for your journal or a card. I loved this frame. I end up using this frame on the cover of my book. I thought that after I created the medallion that would sit nicely in the center of the frame. So that's kind of my plan on how I'm going to use this die. And the dies, as far as price, I felt that some of them were very reasonable and then there was others that I thought were priced a little bit high. Some were a little smaller in size than what I planned, like this one right here, the uh, envelope, pocket envelope with the tag. It was just a lot smaller in size than, than what I thought. And I do uh, cut the die cut out for that to show you. And then these nesting dies, I really liked these and the price on these was very affordable. Like I said, some of the dies were, I thought, very reasonably priced and some, like the previous one I showed you, the envelope 
die with the, the, the little pocket envelope die with the, the tag that came with it. I thought that was priced a little high, just again because it was a lot smaller than I thought. And then there's these really cute Polaroid dies. I loved these. I will be using these. I'm sure you'll see me use these in an upcoming video. I have lots of ideas of what I want to do with those. And then I selected these ornate frames. I loved how they had these smaller inner frames. I thought that you could make really cute tags with those intersections. And then this one that I show here, I do end up using for the cover of this journal. It's just beautiful when you have it all cut out. The only downside to it is on the sides. It, they were kind of hard, it was hard to pull the paper out from the side of the die on those those frame dies and they were really frail and fragile so you had to be very careful when pulling the paper out from them so that was the only downside on those two dies but beautiful beautiful um, die cuts and then the previous one that I just showed is where you weave the ribbon through and I know I use that one a lot and then this one um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I remember when I saw it on her site, it was really a cool die. So yeah, I'll have to check it out again. And then there's this pocket envelope die. Again, I use these all the time. Love them, love them, love them. So that's one I'm sure you will see me use. And this one, the flower one, I was a little disappointed with this one in that I thought when you go to create your die cut with this die, you'd have this one piece, this, you know, this one flower piece, but it's actually all these little separate pieces. So the petals are separate pieces, the bloom bud part of the flower, that's a separate piece, and the leaves are all a separate piece. And so after you go to cut out that die cut from that flower die, it just everything falls apart and you have to piece your flower together so I was a little bummed out with that one but all in all beautiful dies and uh, I want to thank in love arts I will have the link to her shop below along with the discount code so be sure to check out her wonderful selection of dies and some of them are made in the USA okay so let's go ahead and get started in making the cover of this journal as stated previously, I'm going to be creating the focal point of my cover and creating a medallion using the Quick Cure Clay and one of the Finnebear molds. Now, when you use this clay, some things to keep in mind are you want to make sure that you wear gloves in case you have sensitive skin. It can be a little irritating to the skin before it cures, before that clay cures. And you probably wanna do this in a well ventilated area with the window open or just a big area and have a fan going because the fumes are quite strong. So I'm gonna go ahead, put on my gloves. And the one thing I really loved about this clay that I noticed right off the bat is, aside from the smell, <laughs> is it is really nice and soft. It's super easy to work with. I thought it was so much easier to work with than paper clay. And the one thing with this clay too is if you forget to seal the bag or if you leave the clay out, it will not cure until you heat set it. So it will stay nice and soft until you heat set it. So that was another added bonus. I know I opened up one of my packages that I received from Prima, the Prima paper clay, and it was a brand new package, and the clay, the paper clay was really, really hard. I don't even know if I can use it. So I have to give a big thumbs up on that, on how easy it is to, to work with. So what I did is I just started by taking the clay and rolling it into a little ball, and now I'm just pressing it into the mold and taking out a little bit of the excess clay there and just patting it into the mold, trying to get as even of a, a surface on the back there as possible. The other upside to this clay is 
it only takes a few minutes for it to cure using your heat gun. So like with paper clay, I believe it takes 24 hours, maybe 10, 24 hours, something like that. I don't remember. And with this, it's you're, again, you're just talking a few minutes. You heat set it with your heat gun and it's done. And so you can create multiple embellishments within a matter of minutes. After I get all my clay put into each section of the mold, and you don't have to fill up the entire mold. You know, you, if you just want to do one section of it, you can do one. And I'm not going to do all of the sections of this mold, the little flowers and everything. I mainly just want to create these little pendants. So I'm just going to take and put clay in the face sections of this mold. Okay, so now you see where I'm taking the heat gun and I'm gonna go over it until I see a little plume of smoke appear and you can see the change in color. It starts to lighten kind of a, a whitish color on the top and you can tap it to see if it's hard. And when it is hard, you know that it is cured and it is done and it's that simple. It's just that simple. <laughs> I love it. I think it took maybe a total of three minutes or so for it to actually cure. And again, you, if you take a close look, you can see it starts to change. The texture even changes on the back a little bit. And you'll see this little plume of smoke rise and then it turns little areas of it turn white and here you see me tapping it just to make sure everything's nice and hard before I go to remove the clay from the mold and removing the clay from the mold is super easy I just kind of take and bend the mold a little bit and it pops right out and look at beautiful oh I love it I love it I love it now I have these beautiful pendants that I can use and I will show you how I I'm going to create kind of a bronzed aged medallion. Okay, so I have the cover of my book and then what I'm going to also do is just select a few trims, some pieces of fabric, things that I might want to use in decorating my cover. So I just have this little selection here and I grabbed a lot of cream colors, golds, pulled mainly those colors. I thought those would look nicely with the dark blue cover there. And then the dyes that I'll be using from In Love Arts. And again, be sure to check out her shop. She has more than dyes available. She has quite a selection of stamps as well as other crafting supplies. So be sure to check her shop out. Okay, so I'm going to start by just picking out a piece of double-sided cardstock and I'm going to use one of the papers from a blue fern collection. I love the weight of blue ferns papers. I was going to use from my bird waltz collection, but believe it or not, I had to sell my personal package of papers to someone <laughs> and I sold out. I did just get another shipment in. So if you want that collection, the bird waltz collection, I do have a few paper packs still left. I'll probably have to do another order for another shipment because they seem to be going really fast. It was, uh, it was a hit. And I do have another collection coming. I think it's gonna be launching around January, February, sometime around there. So be on the lookout for the next collection. So what I did here is I took the cardstock, I ran it through the Spellbinders 3D embossing folder and I had to run it through each end to get that design. I love Spellbinders 3D embossing folders. I do have some of these still available at my site. I think I have them marked down 50-60% and they're just wonderful embossing folders. They're some of my favorites and so you can still get your hands on these. And the next thing I did is I took some of the Finnebear wax in the denim blue, just to tie in that denim blue color from the cover of the journal. And now I'm taking some of the denim blue in the Distress Oxide and distressing my edges. 
most of this is going to be covered in the center so it really doesn't matter you know that I skipped a lot of the area in the center there because again I'm going to be covering a lot of it I just wanted to introduce some of that darker blue shade with the wax I love the different textures I love using different mediums and so we're just going to kind of have fun using all sorts of different uh, mediums on this cover here the next thing I did is I took some gold mirror board and I used that beautiful frame die from in love arts and that's going to be my focal point with my medallion there and this is the pocket envelope die that I was talking about I really loved it I mean you could make really cute embellishments with it I guess or use it for ephemera in your journal but it just, as you can see, it's really small and it's just not what I expected for the price. I thought it was a little pricey for the size of it, but it's a, it's an adorable uh, die, die cut. And I'm not sure if I'm going to incorporate it in my cover or not, but I can see using it in a lot of my journal making projects. And really, you know, if you're spending six, seven dollars on a die, it's probably worth it if you're going to use it a lot uh, because you can, you know, I don't know how many times you can use a die. I don't think I've ever worn a die out or, <laughs> you know, I'm not sure on that. So in the end, if it's something you're getting up using a lot, it's very reasonable. And now I'm taking one of the frames and it comes with these little corners and I'm going to cut pieces of this frame and use them for the corners and edges of my cover. And I'll show you here what I was talking about in regard to the side of this die when you're pulling the paper. And the gold mirror board is pretty durable. It's pretty sturdy cardstock like paper. And I still had to be really careful pulling it out from the die because it's you can see those sides are so frail but it's a beautiful beautiful die cut and so I'm just cutting the sections of the frame and going to incorporate those on the corners of my cardstock since I can't use you know the frames way too small <laughs> for how I want to use it so I'm going to cut it and then the edges I'll probably just cover with some trim some lace and we'll just kind of tie it all together that way and here's kind of the idea of how I'm going to put everything together I just played around laid things down plopped some lace down basically and came up with how I wanted to layer things so I have my papers this is the other die cut that I did uh, from the dies, those nesting dies. And then I took and embossed it. I got my little Empress from Anna Griffin. Oh my gosh, I love this machine. It's a tinier version of the Empress of her larger machine, but it's just perfect because I can put it on my project table and then be able to create die cuts with some of my smaller dies. I love it. I love it. Okay, so what you guys see me doing here is I'm taking some black gesso and painting my medallion. If you don't have black gesso, you can use black acrylic paint. I'm sure you'll get the same effect. And then after I have it all painted, I'm going to pull out my Frank Garcia Artisan powders and the Finnebear waxes and just kind of play around with those. The colors I'm going to start off with is I have the La Chaparral, I think is how you pronounce it. And it's this beautiful rusty color, this rust brown color. So it gives it that nice aged effect that I'm going for. I wanted kind of a rusty bronzy patina effect. It's kind of what I'm visualizing so I'm just gonna start with some of this powder these powders are super easy to use I'm just taking one of my you know grubbier brushes and 
dipping it in the powder and applying it to my piece there. And then I'm going to take some of this Bronze Age and Lucky Emerald waxes and apply those over the powder. And I start with the Bronze Age. Now this color, I love this color. I probably could have stopped right here after applying the Bronze Age wax. However, <laughs> I was having way too much fun playing around. And so I, yeah, I ended up creating kind of a, 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 a look that I didn't want. <laughs> um, you, If you do this, you can skip using the Lucky Emerald, I think. It was a lot greener than I thought it was going to be when I applied it, and I wasn't quite sure. I mean, it kind of did give it a patina look, but not like this patina powder. The powder, I love the powder. It really gives it that, you know, rusty patina aged look that I was going for. But then I noticed as I was applying all these powders, I started losing some of the depth, some of that black. And I thought that if I added some of the silver wax over it, I could brighten things up a little bit, but then the color, it just wasn't the color that I wanted. So I guess if you want a silver medallion, this would be a perfect, perfect method for you know creating that look but that is not what I was going for at all. And then I applied some bronze age over the silver, and then I was really losing the depth. You know, the black just wasn't showing underneath. And so I had to go back over it with some of the black just so, just to kind of bring that depth back. And this was after I was applying more of the powders because I wanted to change the color back to that bronzy color. Yeah, I made it way more complicated than I needed to. <laughs> and then I thought I could take some of my gold metallic paint. And I did like the look of this, but it was almost a little too yellow. So you just see me playing around, basically. I'm adding more of the patina powder. I really love the patina powder. I think if you did the black gesso and then went over with the La Chaparral, uh, that rusty colored powder that you see me using here, and then some of the patina powder, you would get a beautiful, beautiful look. But if you want to do exactly what I'm doing here, you know, by all means, definitely the more layers you use, whether it's in any medium, you know, whether it's acrylic paints or watercolors or whatever it might be, you're going to get more of a, a refined look just because you have all these underlying layers and colors coming through. And that's why a lot of artists do their underpainting. It really creates that depth and realism to your piece. So, you know, you can do exactly what I'm doing here and, and add all these different layers or just do the simple technique of, of just the black gesso, the patina, la chaparral, and bronze age wax. Okay, so the next thing I had to do is add in a little of this gold pebio gilding wax. This is some of my favorite stuff right here. I love the gold and silver gilding wax by Pebio. It's the best. In my opinion, it is the best. I absolutely love this stuff. It's so easy to work with. A little bit goes a long way and it has this beautiful, beautiful gold color. I just, it's one of my must have. So be on the lookout for these products. I do hope to have them available very soon. So there is my medallion. Love it. I love the way she turned out to me. She looks like this little bronze piece. And I'm just going to take and clean my brush off onto my embossed die cut here. I figure why waste the product? Most of it will be covered, but you know, I figured it doesn't hurt to add in a few or bring in a few of these 
colors and textures to my embossed piece here. And so I'm just adding in a little bit of what's left on my paper, some of the black gesso, the powders, and the waxes off my brush. Again, the main colors that I was using were the patina, the La Chaparelle Artisan powders, and the Aged Bronze and the Gold Gilded Wax by Pebio. Okay, so now I'm going to take it down to the first layer and we're going to put everything together. So I start with my embossed piece of cardstock, but before I adhere that down, I just take some of the pistachio distress oxide and distress the edges of my book cover. I want to bring in some of that teal. I found this beautiful trim that I got from Sheila. She has boho, I think it's boho daydreams. And she's got this beautiful, beautiful trim that she sells. And I will put all her information in my description below. But I wanted to make sure that since I was using that beautiful trim, you can see it off to the left, that teal sequenced trim, that I brought some of that color into the cardstock on the edge of the um, cover there. And then I just used my white glue to adhere the cardstock down onto the book cover and I'm using my brayer to make sure that the glue is spread evenly and everything's adhered down very well. I want to make sure the corners are glued down. Everything's glued down really good. And then I think I'm going to just use some different laces, some crocheted lace, some burlap trim, just things that have a lot of different textures and building up my layers. So what I'm going to do from here is put on some music and let you all just kind of kick back, relax, and watch. I hope you enjoy watching the process again as I build my layers using different textures of trims, papers, and so forth.
Okay, so as you can see, I just started to build up my layers. I'm using some lace and the burlap printed trim that I got at Hobby Lobby. And now I'm taking one of my die cuts and I'm just distressing it with some uh, black soot distress ink. <laughs> I haven't used distress ink in quite a while, but I couldn't find my black distress oxide, so I went with my distress inks. And now I'm just taking some of these foam squares and I'm going to build up my layers by using the squares. Now I'm going to glue them just to add a little bit more reinforcement, but I wanted it lifted up from the lace, so that's why I opted to use those foam squares. And again, you know, if you don't have the exact items that I'm showing here, you can use similar items. You know, pull out your scrap pieces of fabrics and trims and just start laying them down and layering them and coming up with your own unique style. This is just to show you how I take those different elements and how I'm building them up to create this cover. And I did want to mention that the other beautiful trim, the, these trims right here, I, I mean, I'm going to show more of them in another video, but I got that whole bag of trims. They're beautiful sequence, embellished trims from Boho Daydreams um, from Sheila. And be sure to check out her shop because she has some of the most beautiful trims. I mean, they're just stunning. And uh, I'll have all that information about her shop and how you can reach out to her um, in the description below the video. And so now I'm adding on two layers of the foam squares because I want it to go up even further from the page really wanting to create that dimension on the cover here. And as you can see with that peachy pink piece of lace that I have going down that one side, you can have it to where you don't have to have everything in the center or everything perfectly cut. In fact, the more you off-center things and the you know, the more that you have things in different lengths and shapes and different textures, I think that is what creates that interest to whatever it is you're creating, whether it's a, a mixed media form of, of art or like this cover that I'm doing for the journal, whatever it might be. So I guess... <laughs> I mean, one of the things that was really hard for me to break from was trying to have everything super perfect, everything centered and everything the exact same length and then just it looked flat. And the other thing is colors, like mixing the colors up a little bit and not trying to have everything too matchy-matchy. I like a real eclectic looking um piece, whatever it might be that I'm working with. I love using, again, those different colors, those different textures, and I do try to accent or bring in, pull certain colors like that teal color. And you'll see as I go along here that I realize I forgot my beautiful piece of teal sequenced trim so I kind of created a little bit of a mess and having to pull some things apart <laughs> but yeah it's uh it's it's why you see me normally I just you know I will place things down first and just kind of see how it looks before I go go and glue things down I want to be real sure that you know I have my layers built up the way that I like them before I just start randomly gluing things down. Of course, I have to tell you, my mom, she like, I don't know, she amazes me because she can just like start plopping stuff down and she just glues it, she doesn't overthink it. I don't know how she does it. And she, she it just turns out beautiful. <laughs> I can't do that. But I guess we all have our own little unique styles that we like to do and you know, main thing is that you're just, you're having fun. 
So you'll see here in a little bit where I have to start pulling some of this stuff off to add in that teal trim. And then I just add those final layers with the gold mirror board frame and my medallion that I made from the Quick Your Clay. And then it will be done. I will have my cover all done. And so, yeah, you know, lately in the projects I've been doing, I've been trying to do things that are easy, but you know, the finished look, it looks maybe difficult or complex looking. Uh, I, I try to have things simple but beautiful. And so I hope you have been enjoying the journal series and this is a continuation from where I left off. I think it was the journal making series part four. So I just kind of uh, took and tied this video into that series having it as a part five. And then I will do the part six, which will show how I bind the book together. And I'm still working on it. I'm trying to figure out a way to do it where it's really simple, but a little different because I wanted to use that burlap trim as the spine of my book. And I've not really created a spine using just fabrics and trims. So I'm still working the details out on that, but I'm getting there. Again, I hope to have that video done in the next few weeks, and then I will be announcing the winner of this journal. And I will leave the details again on how to enter. And yeah, I'll be excited. I'll be really excited to announce the winner. <laughs> As I said, it'll be an early Christmas present for somebody, but I'm gonna tie things up here and I'm just adding those little bits of trim and then I'm going to add some more trim to the corners of the book and call her done. So again, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And before I forget, Thanksgiving is around the corner and I will be having some awesome Black Friday specials the day after Thanksgiving. So be sure to check out the site. I will also release a newsletter prior to the Black Friday sale. I might have a private sale for newsletter subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, you can do so by visiting my site, dreamzetc.com, to subscribe. I, again, I have some really amazing Black Friday sales that'll be going on, uh, some real heavy discounts on Prima items, some travel notebooks, some of my mom's kits, uh, like digital collections, some of the uh, Tim Holtz stamp sets. There's a lot. There's a lot, so don't miss it. Be sure to check it out. And again, if you haven't subscribed to the newsletter, make sure you do so. Uh, I might do that private sale just for those newsletter subscribers, and it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. All right, so right here I'm showing kind of the idea of how I want to do that spine of the book. I want to use that printed burlap trim. I think it would tie everything together really nicely. And then it will be ready to give away to one special winner. It's gonna be so exciting. <laughs> all right, so I hope you all enjoyed the video. As always, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, and you are enjoying these videos, be sure to subscribe. I try to get a video done. Well, I'm trying to get a video done every week now, but it just, they take so much time to do. And coming up with the projects along with all the other things that I have to do, filling orders. As you guys know, I also have a cosmetic business, so things get crazy. But I do have an assistant in the works. So I hope to get some help. Yay! <laughs> I'm so excited. Anyway, uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for all the support. And I hope to see you all 
back again for the next video. Thank you so much. Yeah.